Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install the Ubuntu Linux operating system as a guest virtual operating system inside the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. My physical or host computer is running Windows 10. OK, before we begin, there are two important prerequisites. The first prerequisite is that you must have created a virtual machine capable of running Ubuntu. Now, I've already done that and completed that in a previous video. Secondly, you must also have configured this virtual machine to boot from a Ubuntu CD ISO image. And I have also demonstrated that in a previous video. OK, we're good to begin. The first step is to boot the Ubuntu virtual machine which will attempt to boot off the virtual CD that we've placed in the virtual CD-ROM. So make sure it's selected, it's initially powered off, and click Start. So that's going to open up a window. The first thing we're presented with was a message. You have the Auto Capture Keyboard option turned on. I've just clicked on it to expand. This will cause the virtual machine to automatically capture the keyboard every time the virtual machine window is activated and make it unavailable to other applications running on your host machine. When the keyboard is captured, all keystrokes, including system ones like Alt-Tab, will be directed to the VM. OK, so basically our mouse is going to be captured inside this virtual box window. You can press the host key at any time to uncapture the keyboard and mouse if it is captured and return it to normal operation. So the host key that's currently defined on my computer is the right control key. That's important. So I'm now going to dismiss that. Now there's a second message. The virtual machine reports that the guest operating system supports mount, mouse pointer integration. This means that you do not need to capture the mouse pointer to be able to use it in your guest OS. All mouse actions you perform when the mouse pointer is over the virtual machine's display are directly sent to the guest OS. If the mouse is currently captured, it will be automatically uncaptured. OK, basically, this dismisses the first point. Mouse point integration is a new feature that's supported in Oracle VirtualBox version 5, which we're running. The mouse icon on the status bar will look like this to inform you that the mouse pointer integration is supported by the guest OS and is currently turned on. And as you can see, it is here. OK. Um, some note, some applications may behave incorrectly in mouse point integration mode. You can always disable it for the current session and enable it again by selecting the corresponding action from the menu. That's fine. So I'm going to dismiss this um, notification. Great. We are now presented with the welcome installation window. Ensure on the left hand side that the English language is selected, at least for the purposes of this demonstration. Next, we're given two options. We can try Ubuntu out, or we can install it straight away. By choosing Try, you can try Ubuntu without making any changes to your computer directly from the CD. We're going to select the Install Ubuntu option, because recall, we're installing into a virtual machine, so we're not actually overwriting any physical disks on our, hard, on our physical computer. OK, so I'm going to select Install Ubuntu. So it's going to take a few moments, and then we're presented with the keyboard layout option. So I'm based in Ireland, so I'm going to select the Irish keyboard. You should select the keyboard layout appropriate to your country. So there is the Irish keyboard um, and Irish. Now I'm going to test it by typing such characters as hash and um, tilde, the at symbol, Yes, it all looks good and double quotes. Perfect. So that's correct for my keyboard. So I'm going to select continue. The next step of the installation process concerns updates and other software. We are asked, what apps would you like to install to start with? We can choose either a normal installation, which will install web browser utilities, office software games, and media players, and so forth, or a minimal installation, which will just install web browser and basic utilities. I'm going to select a normal installation, because this is typically what a normal user would do. Also, you'll have the option to, to check download updates while installing Ubuntu, and also 
to check install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. I would typically recommend that you would check both of these. However, just to minimize the, the length of this video, I'm going to uncheck those so as to ensure this video won't be any longer than necessary. But in the real world, I typically would check both of those. That's great. So select next or continue, I beg your pardon. We are now asked to choose our installation type. We're told that this computer currently has no detected operating system. What would you like to do? And the default option is to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and any other files in all operating systems. Okay, that's quite scary when you see that initially. Oh my gosh, no, I don't want to delete all my programs or photos or music. But don't worry, in our case, recall that we are installing Ubuntu into a virtual um, operating system, as a virtual operating system, I beg your pardon, within the Oracle VM Virtual Box Manager. And what I mean specifically is that we actually created, if I may select settings, um, select storage, and show you, if you recall in the previous video, we created a dynamically allocated disk with a maximum size of 25 gigabytes, but whose current actual size is only two megabytes because it's blank. So this is the actual disk that we'll completely overwrite, a disk that is already blank, and it will simply grow dynamically as the files are installed into it. So there's nothing to worry about. So um, let me select the installation window again, perfect. Just to mention, there are other options. When you install, you can also encrypt the new Ubuntu installation for security. This is a good idea, but again, just to reduce the length of this video, I won't check that option. You could also install and configure a logical volume management um, within your Ubuntu installation. This allows you to take snapshots and easier partition sizing, uh, easier partition resizing, I beg your pardon. And likewise, you can actually choose something else, which effectively allows you to manually configure, create and resize the partitions that you wish to use yourself. So I'm going to select the default option, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Great, and select install now. We are prompted then, basically, are you sure? Write the changes to disk. If you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disks. Otherwise, you'll be able to make other further changes manual. No, we're happy. We're going to partition. The following partition tables will be created um, and the following partitions um, are going to be formatted. Just for of interest, in previous versions of Ubuntu, there typically was created both the home partition, if you like, the ext4 partition, as well as a swap partition. But in the latest version of Ubuntu, uh, version 18.4, which is in version we're installing now, the long-term support edition, there is no swap partition, just to be aware. So I'm going to select continue. Great. So it's now proceeding is now in the process of creating those partitions and formatting them. But recall, it's formatting a virtual disk that we have created that currently is empty anyway. So this is gonna take a few moments. Great. In the next step, we're asked to choose our time zone. So I'm based in Dublin and Ireland. So by default, it's automatically selected. So I'm going to choose continue. In the next step, we're asked some basic information about ourselves. So you're, we're asked to enter our name. So I'm going to enter my own name, Martin O'Connor. Um, the computer name, I'm going to choose for simplicity, um, Earth, <laughs> why not? The username, because this is a demo, I'm just going to call my user um, name test user. This is a demo program. I'm going to choose an appropriate password. So you should endeavor to choose a good password, which is a mix of upper and lowercase and non-alphanumeric characters um, where possible. Um, but obviously pick a password you will remember. <laughs> That's important. And you can choose to either log in automatically or require my password to log in. I would highly recommend that you select the option require my password to log in. And then choose next, continue. So now it's going ahead and proceeding with the installation itself. This can take any, this could take five, 10, 15 minutes, depending. Um, the current time where I am now is 9, 11 p.m. and 19 seconds. Just the reason why I'm showing you that is just, 
get a good idea of how long it actually takes, for example, for me here. Um, I don't think I'll record the entire installation process because it will probably take too long. But um, what I will do is um, I can pause it and I can resume it once I'm prompted for user input again. Okay. It now informs us that the installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. Great. So I'm now going to select restart now, left click. And it should begin shutting down. We are now prompted to please remove the installation medium and then press enter. Recall that we inserted a virtual CD into the virtual CD-ROM. So we need to remove that because if we don't remove it, when it reboots, it will simply attempt to re reinstall Ubuntu all over again. So let me go back here and verify. And let me select settings and have a look at my storage. And as you can see, the CD-ROM is now empty. So it has ejected the CD, the virtual CD from the virtual CD-ROM. Great. Therefore, I can simply go back here and select and uh, press enter. Grand. So it is now in the process of rebooting. And once again, we get the notifications that we received the last time. The virtual machine reports that guest OS does not support mouse point integration. And we now know that it does. It'll present us with that information shortly. So I'm going to dismiss this notification. And now it's going to boot up. This can take a few moments, or quite a few moments, depending. <laughs> OK, as you can see, my Ubuntu um, has frozen. Um, I had installed Ubuntu, I rebooted, and it's simply frozen upon reboot. So, and I believe the problem possibly is to do with not enough video um, graphics memory. Um, so I'm going to choose File, Close, and Power Off the Machine. Great. I'm now, Ubuntu is now powered off. I select it, choose settings. Um, I'm going to go to system. Um, processor, I'm going to give it two processors. I can afford to give it two processors. Um, motherboard, memory, four gig, I, no harm. I'm going to, four gig should be enough actually. I'm going to leave that setting alone because many of you may only have four gig. I'm going to use two CPUs. Um, and display video memory. I think this is possibly the problem. I'm going to increase this to the max 128 meg, which most people could afford in their computers, and enable 3D acceleration and enable 2D, um, oh, sorry, just enable 3D uh, acceleration. So the main changes I've made are, I've given two CPU processors to the virtual machine, and I've increased the video memory to max, which is 128 meg. I'm gonna choose okay. And now I'm going to attempt to start. And hopefully it will boot this time without hanging, but we shall see. <laughs> again, I think it's wonderful that this is happening to me because if it happens to you, again, you'll know how to deal with it. So I'm going to dismiss the notification because we know that's not going to be a problem. And give it a few moments. Interestingly enough, it didn't present us with any error messages thus far. Ah, oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> there is your message. And it was at this point it froze before. So um, let's give it a minute. Great, that actually seemed to solve the problem. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to select my name here and type in the password that I originally set at installation time. I'm perfect. Let's log in. Great. I'm glad you saw the errors that I encountered because if you encounter those, you now know how to go ahead and fix it. Um, excellent. So we have a nice little welcome. Um, what's new in Ubuntu? And as I mentioned, Unity is no longer the Unity interface that was a stable diet of Ubuntu. I can't remember, was it from Ubuntu 12? Um, or even Ubuntu 10, possibly Ubuntu 12 until Ubuntu 17.10. Um, and we now use um, GNOME. So we have the activities up here. Um, our file menu is here. The time and date, our time anyway and day is there. 
and then our system notification menu here. The close button is going to be on the right hand side as opposed to traditionally the left hand side it was before. We have the dock with our apps and then we can select here to see generic apps. Excellent. I'm going to move this slightly so as to increase the screen. So um, sometimes you want to react with this, but I think I've given it more memory now, so it should be okay. Um, I'm going to now select next. Canonical live patching keeps your computer secure by applying some updates that would normally require restarting. Would you like to set up live patch? I would recommend setting it up, but again, to keep this video from being any longer, I'm going to just ignore that for a moment and select next. Um, Ubuntu can report information that helps developers improve it. This includes things like computer model, what software is installed, and your approximate location. Fine, you can choose to do that. Um, I'm going to choose no, just again to minimize the impact on this installation. And there you go, we're ready to go. So we can click open software now. Um, and you can see the featured applications, editors pick, um, and you can choose any one of these categories. Fantastic. So these are all apps. We can view which apps are installed. So these are all of the apps that are currently installed already. So I have all these little apps or big apps as the case may be. Excellent. Um, and that's it. Um, and I'm going to click done, select done there. Again, updates could have been installed as part of the installation process, but I did not choose to do that to minimize the length of this video. So again, you would normally click install now. Again, I'm not going to do that because that could take another five, 10 minutes. So I'm going to close that. Excellent. That's all I wish to show you. Um, you have now successfully installed Ubuntu Linux version 18.4 LTS long-term support edition on Oracle in Oracle VirtualBox running on a Windows 10 physical host PC. Excellent. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you.